What's up, baseball players, parents, and coaches? I'm Coach Dan Blewett. In today's video, five incredibly important things that every amateur player needs if he wants to be as good as he hopes to be. All right, so if you're new here, I'm Coach Dan. I'm a former pro pitcher. In the description below, you'll find my new book called Clean Your Cleats, which is an extension of this video. Everything that I'm talking about, the mindset, the hard work, the practice, knowing yourself, all this stuff is in my new book. So if you really like today's video, I highly encourage you to check that out. There's sample chapters below. And of course, you can pick up the audiobook, paperback, hardback, whatever you want. Um, so in today's video, five critical things that every ball player ha needs to have to be as successful as they want to be. So let's just jump right into it. The first one is habits. You have to have consistency of habits and a chip away mindset. If you like everyone wants these hacks, right? They all want this like next big YouTube tip that's going to like change their baseball career. And there, there really aren't many out there. Um, and also ultimately, once you start to like watch everyone's videos and, and you listen and learn from everybody, even if you find a couple really big, important ones, it still always becomes a long haul thing about trying to find out what's going to work for you. But the best players, not only in baseball, but in every sport are the ones that always show up. They work hard consistently day after day, week after week, month after month. So it's really about consistency of habits, not just like, oh, I'm going to bum rush it in the winter and then I'm not going to like touch a baseball for, you know, I mean, look, consistency is the biggest thing. Even if you feel like you're in a plateau, you're not making a lot of progress right now, you have to keep at it, find a great routine that works, at, works for you and keep chipping away. Remember, as a pitcher, you'll gain two to five miles per hour in velocity every year. If you gain five every year, you'd be like the hardest throwing pitcher in the world by age 18, probably. So it's not about the big jumps. It's about the long term consistency. So that's number one. You have to show up every day and have that consistency of good habits. Number two, developing a deep love of what you're doing. And parents, this is the, the, the time for you to sort of be a little more hands off, because if your kid doesn't really love baseball enough to go do number one, which I just talked about, which is to go practice their face off all the time, you're not going to be able to force them into it. I know a lot of parents who are well-meaning and are like, God, I just wish he would practice more because I just I see how much potential he has. They've got to want it. I love throwing. I love throwing so much. It was my favorite thing as a kid. I would go throw a tennis ball off the wall for hours. I know so many other people who did this. One of my close friends, we talk baseball all the time. Uh, he was also a pro pitcher. We both just love throwing. It's just like our favorite thing. And if you don't have that deep love for whether it's hitting, whether it's fielding, whether it's chasing fly balls, I also just love chasing down fly balls, even though I just like wasn't really that fast to play that, to do that in college. If you don't love that stuff, it's just going to be hard to be good enough long term. And as parents, you need to just observe your kids. Do they really want to go out and practice all the time or do they want to like half the time play this other sport, half the time uh, just, you know, play video games, half the time do this? Look, that's all fine. As a kid, you should do what you want to do. You don't have to go play baseball all the time. But just understand that there's a lot of players out there and the ones that really, really love it are just going to be incentivized to practice more and they're going to outcompete other players because they just want to be on that field so darn bad. So just understand that a deep love of the main actions of baseball, whether it's fielding, swinging that bat or throwing the ball, if you don't have a deep love for at least one of those three, it's probably going to be hard to be a really great player long term. Number three, the ability to self coach and understand your own mechanics, whether it's your swing, whether it's your pitching mechanics, whether it's, I don't know if, I don't know if fielding mechanics really falls in that same, same boat as much as just getting the reps in, but you have to be a self coach at some point, even for the kids that would do a, a weekly lesson with me, you're still doing 90% of your throwing, not under my, under my supervision. I told them this. I'm like, you've got to take what I'm telling you and you've got to go home and internalize it. And every throw that you make, you've got to be focused on is my hand in the right position? Is my front shoulder doing the right thing? Does my backside feel like it's got the right amount of weight in it? Is my front shoulder up? Like you have to learn to be your own coach. And this is why parents, you can't, you don't need to send your kids to two lessons a week, three lessons a week, 24, seven, you know, uh, 52 weeks a year. Your kids need some time to learn to do it on their own. This was why my generation and, and before we just went out and played. So we were constantly figuring out 
how to just be better than our buddies, how to hit the ball a little farther, how to throw it a little farther. Kids don't do that today, but parents, you still have to find a, a balance of get your kids the instruction that they need, but don't let them be completely reliant on it. If they, if they slump and they struggle, give them some time to figure it out on their own or not before just running back into the hitting coach's arms. They have to be able to self-coach or they're not going to be able to succeed long term and really and really develop into great players. So understand that the self-coaching and self-knowledge is a huge part of being a good baseball player. Number four, a no excuses mindset. And this is something, especially for you parents, you can really foster on the car ride home after a game. Don't blame the umpires on the car ride home. Don't blame, especially don't blame their teammates. Really, the more you internalize it and say, I could have done better, even when you did pretty well, even when things, yeah, that ball did take a bad hop. That umpire did screw us out of a bad call. Our teammates really did collapse around us. Even when those things happen, and, and that does happen, obviously, you still need to have this internal focus. So it's like, well, yeah, the umpire definitely blew that call in the eighth inning, but if I had had a better bat in the fifth, I could have got that runner home from third with less than two outs, with a, just with a good fly ball, and then that, that, that call wouldn't have hurt us, right? That's the right mindset to have. The best ball players are not blaming everyone else when they don't do well. It always comes back to bite them, and that mindset, they stop growing. So everyone who's watching this video, whether you're a coach, a parent, or a player, you need to be inwardly focused. And even when the external stuff does bite you, and it does, like I'm realistic here, I've been the, I've borne the brunt of all those things, bad calls, bad, bad play by teammates and bad hops in the field and whatever. Um, you still have to say that stuff is always going to happen. It's part of the environment. It's part of the game. But what could I have done better? I'm not going to blame them. I'm going to work on the things that I can control. That's a really important mindset to have, not only in baseball, but just in life, right? And the last thing is a dedication to the tedious things. We go back to number one, being consistent, having great habits. That's that's huge. And again, you have to love the game and you have to love what you're doing because there's a lot of stuff that you just have to suck up and you have to, it just sucks. So for me, I love the game enough to do the really tedious, boring arm care that I had to do to stay healthy, that every pitcher has to do to stay healthy. There's a lot of stuff like catchers. You guys don't love catching bullpens, but you have to catch bullpens, A, to become a better catcher, and B, because it's part of the job. So number five is you have to be dedicated to the tedious stuff. If, you, if you're not dedicated to the tedious stuff and, and still being really focused and being good at it, then it's not going to work out very well because there's a lot of tedious stuff in baseball. Again, I love throwing, but doing my throwing drills every day and like warming up the same way and like doing the running, those aren't necessarily fun. Like the fun throwing for me is like bombing it out, long tossing and uh, I don't know, just like goofing around sometimes, like throwing different styles and like obviously pitching in, in the bullpen, pitching in the game. Those are the fun things, but like playing catch isn't always the most fun. Doing arm care is terrible. <laughs> doing all the running that pitchers have to do is terrible. All the flexibility and mobility stuff that I had to do to like stay healthy and be my best. Not great. It's pretty boring. Shagging BP. Terribly boring. So understand there's a ton of this stuff and you can't only want the good. You have to be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do my arm care four days a week because I want to be great. And I know it's not fun, but it's, it's the part that I have to grit through because I really love what I'm doing and I really want to be great. So it's not just the consistency of the stuff that's a little more exciting, but it's also the mindset that I want to do this tedious stuff because I know how important it is. And I'm willing to swallow that jagged pill to reach my goals one day. All right. So hopefully this video was helpful. These five things could also just equally apply to any other career or profession or sport or any other endeavor that you want to be really good at. All jobs, even like mine, as like a, I'm mostly a YouTuber and writer and, and speaker these days, I have a pretty cool life and I'm, I'm grateful for it. There's still a lot of stuff that I grit out on a daily basis, editing videos and putting together the script of this video that's that's hanging on my camera. Like all this stuff, there's prep in everything. That's what I'm talking about with number five. And the fun stuff is getting to share my knowledge and, you know, seeing my quality of videos go up and seeing it help other people and and just showing up. But again, these things apply everywhere. And the more players understand that not making excuses, having great consistent habits, um, really loving what you're doing and having purpose behind it 
self-coaching, not making excuses, and eating the dirt, so to speak, that's what really makes you successful in every aspect of life, all right? So thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out my new book for ball players called Clean Your Cleats. I promise you'll love it. It's really meaningful. I'm really proud of it. And if nothing else, I'll see you here in the next video.